Okay. Um, Welcome back, everyone. So it's, a, it's a great pleasure to, to welcome you to this session called Advanced Imaging and Visualization for Treatment Evaluation in Neurology. And it's a great pleasure to welcome Kjell Morten Myhr, who is a professor in neurology at the University of Bergen and also consultant in neurology at Haukeland University Hospital. He's the chair of Bergen MS Research Group, head of the Department of Clinical Medicine, and not least, the director of this new NeuroSysMed Center, a, re a research center of excellence for clinical therapy of serious neurological diseases. Kjell Morten is an expert in MS therapy. His research interest is mainly within epidemiology, clinical trials, and biomarkers of MS diagnosis, prognosis, and treatment response. He's performed numerous randomized controlled trials, advised more than 20 PhD students and authored more than 300 uh, papers and book chapters. So we're looking forward to hear about the center and your views on imaging and the role of that. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Leif, uh, for this kind introduction and, and many thanks for this um, very nice introduction, uh, uh, invitation to this, um, this uh, conference. And I can talk about my favorite topic. Uh, and for the time being, it's neurosysmed and, of course, um, uh, therapy in neurology. Uh, the objectives of my talk is first to um, present uh, our new center, or uh, neurosysmed, and then um, answer the challenge, uh, the role of imaging in, in our centers, and what do we need in our center related to imaging. Uh, Neurosysmet uh, is the first uh, center for clinical treatment research in Norwegian Forskning Center for Klinisk Behandling, FKB. It was opened in for about one year ago. We got the funding in late 2018, and after uh, almost one year of planning, we opened one year ago. Uh, it is funded by the Norwegian Research Council and also from the host institutions, Haukland uh, uh, University Hospitals and, uh, and um, University of Bergen. Uh, the center is funded uh, for the time being for a total of eight years. And you can see a very nice uh, fall picture, um, a nice color in the background from the opening. You can see the uh, Minister of Health um, that, was, that opened the, the, the center together with uh, the representatives from the Norwegian Research Council, the head of administration at Haukland University Hospital at the far right, and uh, the, uh, the head of administration for um, Plus Hospital, a local hospital in Bergen on the far left, and the university representative, um, and uh, Harris, the, my co-chair, and myself in the mid. Uh, the center is responsible, I have, uh, for four serious diseases of the central nervous system. Uh, uh, we have divided into neuroinflammatory uh, neuro diseases uh, that includes only one disease, but it's the, for me the most important one, multiple sclerosis, and I, I am responsible for that. And uh, my dear colleague, uh, uh, Charalampi Solis or Harris, is responsible for the neurodegeneration part of the center that includes three diseases. He is mainly responsible for the Parkinson's disease and uh, Ole Björn Tysnes for ALS and Christopher Haugerwald for dementia. Uh, the main objectives for the center and the task for the center is to make new therapeutic developments uh, available at, uh, for, at an early stage for Norwegian patients. And we will do that through clinical treatment trials uh, of all for diseases. And we um, are making all kinds of interventions, but first of all, uh, disease modifying therapies that most physicians are eager to promote, and also the patients are, of course, 
uh, eager to get um, access to disease-modifying therapies, but also symptomatic therapies as well as uh, care at the end of life. Um, and the studies are both uh, investigator-initiated studies, but also in collaboration with, uh, collaboration with pharmaceutical companies. And we also even have uh, user-initiated clinical trials. There is a huge number of therapeutic challenges uh, within our four diseases. Uh, most of all in, the, in uh, neurodegeneration. Uh, no, actually no therapies that substantially uh, affect or uh, influence the disease cause in, in the neurodegenerative diseases are available. Only symptomatic therapy. And more than 2,000 clinical trials have been performed without any major breakthrough. It's quite different for multiple sclerosis because during the last two or three decades, several therapies have been available, uh, but there is still no cure for the disease. And uh, it's especially for the inflammatory part of the disease uh, that we can treat today. The progressive part, the neurodegenerative part, part of the disease um, have only modest effect from uh, the available therapies. And the therapies may give life-threatened side effects and actually we don't have any good instrument or markers to make a patient-tailored therapy. And uh, there is a huge cost of this therapy Norway used about 1 billion Norwegian kroner for treating MS patients nowadays. The vision of the center is brave. We aim to transform clinical neurology in Norway by improving the diagnosis and uh, therapies. And we will do that through organizing clinical trials with a focus on user involvement and include patient, patients, physicians, and hospitals throughout the countries. And we will collaborate with the, the industry and we also have an approach towards systems medicine. By that we mean uh, uh, all the trials that we are performing, of course, live their own lives with their own endpoints and separate analysis, but we will include all the data from all the trials into a, a database that includes both uh, clinical data, imaging data, uh, tissue samples analysis, if they are available, we use muscle biopsy for s some patients, and spinal fluid analysis and omics from the blood analysis. And we, will, we can do then artificial intelligence analysis to stratify the patients according to biomarkers for treatment response, um, prognosis, and disease stratification into subgroups. And then um, use the data for further tailored trials or tailored therapies. Several uh, studies have been started and several has, uh, are about to start. Most of them in multiple sclerosis and Parkinson's disease. And some of you may be aware of the stem cell trial in multiple sclerosis and the recent started um, um, study comparing two different uh, therapies in multiple sclerosis, rituximab and ocrelizumab. And in Parkinson's disease, the no Park study has been finished, and I know s some of you are involved in the analysis of that data, and the no Park study has started, chaired by uh, Harris. And we have also started a study in ALS, and uh, participating also in initiative in dem dementia. And at at, you can see on the bottom line for the uh, Parkinson disease and multiple sclerosis, we are also aiming for uh, uh, industry-sponsored studies that is uh, 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 
some kind of expected from the Norwegian Research Council and, and not at least from the, the Ministry of Health. So what is the role of imaging for uh, our activity and our diseases? And what's a special um, for our diseases is the brain. That is the most important organ in the body. Um, and, uh, uh, and the brain is not available for biopsies, usually. Uh, in, in our diseases, um, if we do a biopsy, then we, don't, we are not sure about the diagnosis. So when we got biopsies in vivo, uh, in living patients, then it's the outliers in our disease. So therefore, uh, imaging is very important for us, both for making the diagnosis, disease stratification, uh, making prognostic um, evaluations, and in clinical trials, uh, efficacy, efficacy measures, and also, of course, safety measures. But uh, the use of uh, imaging uh, is differ, may differ between our diseases, because in multiple sclerosis, it's well established that we use imaging for uh, efficacy endpoints in clinical trials. That has been done for at least 30 or almost 40 years. But it's developing. Uh, so we use that, for, of course, for the diagnosis as a prognostic marker and stratification into trials. And it's often included as a, dif as a, dif a definite um, uh, inclusion criteria into the clinical trials. And of course, uh, as an outcome measure, it may be even a primary outcome of clinical trials, especially phase two trial, proof of concept trials. But then uh, at least secondary uh, endpoint and, and also often an, an exploratory third tertial uh, endpoint. And related to inflammation, the aim is to stop inflammation and related to neurodegenerative processes uh, for the progressive phase of the disease is more the aim is to slow down the progression. Uh, regarding the neurodegenerative diseases, uh, it, uh, imaging has not been that much used as an, at least as an endpoint. Of course, used for the diagnosis and perhaps stratification like um, uh, the, that scan, uh, but that, not that much as an, at least for as a primary endpoint in the clinical trials. But this may change, and we hopefully can contribute to that, that change. Uh, an efficacy outcome may be often explorative or at least a secondary uh, uh, endpoint. And uh, this is a progressive disease, and the aim, or at least what we can hope, is to slow down the progression. So what do we need? A challenge is to get access to image of our patients. Uh, you at the, 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 the visualization center is probably not involved in that part of, but at least many of you are also um, working at the Department of Radiology at the hospital. But that's really a challenge for us. But um, we really want partnership with you to, for the study design and also uh, establish imaging protocols. And what we really lack in Norway is reading centers. Uh, this is a big issue in multiple sclerosis. The, uh, the, the big centers in worldwide is, uh, is, is almost driven by the, the reading center activity in Amsterdam, in London, in Milano, in Montreal. Uh, and of course, uh, developing protocols for new imaging biomarkers and evaluate them. And of course, developing new techniques for new biomarkers in our diseases. 
Then I will talk uh, more about multiple sclerosis because that's uh, m I'm most familiar with multiple sclerosis. And this is a typical uh, standard imaging related to multiple sclerosis, both for clinical follow-up but also in clinical trials, counting lesions. You can see on the left, yes, on the left, the, uh, the GAD-enhancing lesion, T1 GAD-enhancing lesions, that is ongoing inflammatory activity. Typical a baseline image, and this is one, more that one month later, you can see one, two, three, and this one is still there, but the other two has disappeared, and two new has appeared. This is ongoing inflammatory disease activity that we aim to stop. And this is the T2 image, that is more or less um, um, what has happened since the last image. So those white spots here, hyperintensive lesions, they are, most of them are staying for the rest of their life. So this is baseline, this is month one, it could be a one year later, and this, the difference bis with baseline and one, one, uh, one, the later one is what has happened since baseline. Because this is the ongoing, this is a snapshot of the situation related to uh, disease activity. So we are counting the lesions uh, uh, new and enlarging, and we can also make the volume of the lesions. Uh, regarding the neurodegenerative phase of the disease, then it's a typical, it's, uh, it's the measuring volumes. You can see this is a healthy control. This is an, uh, it may be an early relapsing remitting MS because we can see atrophy from the very beginning. And this is a more advanced relapsing remitting, and then they convert to secondary progressive phase, and you can see the atrophy. That we need to stop that process. And uh, sometimes we don't see any new lesions, and we don't, we cannot record any relapse activity. This is an example from a recent PhD at our department. Uh, Gerd Bringeland, she studied a very effective therapy in natalizumab, a monoclonal antibody that stops uh, uh, in inflammatory cells to penetrate over the blood-brain barrier into the brain. And she measured um, the level of binding of those, um, the, that uh, therapy to the, the ligand. And uh, the, the, level, uh, the low level of binding, those patients had a, what they call a wearing off symptoms. They had subjective, subjective symptoms of uh, increased fatigue, cognitive um, dysfunction, and some um, figurability on the motor function. Uh, and that was uh, associated to the level of binding of, those, uh, of the therapy to the to the ligand, um, and uh, when we analyzed uh, one-year follow-ups, they don't have new lesions, they don't have new relapses, so it, it appeared to be a stable patient, but still they had worsening of cognition, increased fatigue, and they had reduced working ability. So we don't catch what's happening on the standard imaging system, but perhaps we can do better, and this is actually from a postdoc uh, that worked at our center in collabor collaboration with several of you um, some years ago. Uh, he um, uh, stayed in, in, in at Harvard and introduced this technique of measuring free water in, in, um, by, in multiple sclerosis patients by using MRI. And this is uh, uh, Alan Skorby. She is a PhD student in our group. She had she have done uh, cognitive testing of, of newly diagnosed patients, and uh, he nicely showed that free water was negatively correlated to the level of cognitive function. So this technique, if you have used applied this technique for the, the other patient group, you may have found some evidence of at least something is happening. Um, another technique that we don't uh, that, that that's not available for uh, available for us in Bergen is this um, PET technique to examine microglia activity activation. This is from a Finnish group that used this technique. 
Um, it's called uh, TSPO PET. That's a translocator protein that is a mitochondrial protein that is increased in microglia during activation. And what we see here is um, a GAD enhanced T1 uh, image with no GAD enhancement, but we can see two what we would um, recognize as uh, inactive lesions, this dark area here and this dark area here. The white one show no enhancement on this PET scan, so it's inactive. But this one is increased enhancement indicating microglia activation. So even though it seems to be an inactive lesion here, there is an ongoing disease process um, as identified by this uh, technique. And they have done a study on the same uh, therapy that GARD used. And this is um, an untreated control. This is uh, on treatment. You can see the level of microglia activity measured by this technique. And you show it go, goes down during therapy. And this is on secondary progressive MS that did not show any evidence of eff effect on the clinical data outcome, but this imaging outcome indicates something is happening during therapy. 51. This is another uh, type of, not GAD enhancement, but uh, it's another uh, contrast medium, ultra small iron oxide particle that can measure um, endothelium activation in the brain, showing that the, the immune cell is penetrating the blood-brain barrier into the brain and making inflammation. And um, this, this is, uh, and without, without uh, blood-brain barrier disruption, so there's no GAD enhancement, but still penetration of immune cells into the brain and make inflammation. And this, uh, this is illustrated on this picture showing um, this is uh, GAD enhanced, uh, GAD enhancing lesions and showing uh, this new contrast or this contrast enhancement that's not shown on the GAD enhancement. And, and uh, this uh, Dutch study showed um, 188 contrast enhancing lesion in a group of MS patients, and only 75 and, and only 25 percent of those uh, had a, a GAD enhancement. So most of those lesions without were uh, were without GAD enhancement, indicating something is going on that is not catched by the, the traditional GAD enhancement. And of course, uh, the latest uh, and, and important issue is the cortical lesions in multiple sclerosis. This, that's a huge uh, challenge uh, in multiple sclerosis. Um, until um, 10 years ago, uh, we thought that the cortical uh, area was not affected by multiple sclerosis because we couldn't see uh, those lesions on histopathology. But at actually Lars Bö at our department, he was one of the, the person that really detected the cortical lesions. And um, uh, this uh, study is from uh, uh, his stay in, in, in Amsterdam where they made a co-registration of uh, uh, autopsies that has been imaged a um, um, few hours op after uh, autopsy. And they showed that uh, less than 5% of the cortical lesions were detected by the conventional MRI and 3 Tesla. But this is uh, improved by the 7 Tesla images. You can see the cortical lesions here. But still, at least when I talked to the Amsterdam group a couple of years ago, they say that, yes, it's less than 5% on the 3 Tesla, but it's about 35% on the 7 Tesla. But this may have been approved uh, 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 been better during the last years. So yes, we need some uh, new 
techniques to do better in multiple sclerosis and also in, in the neurodegenerative diseases. So we, re we really want partnership with you and uh, for the brain diseases, you together with these nice people. This is from the opening um, day. Uh, we also had a seminar with the users. So this is um, representatives from the, our researchers and uh, the user um, organization from all the four diseases. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Hill Morten, for a fantastic, uh, inspiring talk. It's amazing that you've got this center here in Bergen, the first one, actually, of these clinical trial centers. Uh, there were a few uh, questions, I think, here on the uh, Discord. There's one from Alexander Lunderwall. Um, and this is kind of in light of this conference here uh, and previous sessions, that if you could say a little bit about uh, the center's infrastructure for data storage and analysis, and you said something that you had many, many different studies, and you're mm -hmm. going to collect mm -hmm. all the mm -hmm. data in one mm -hmm. database. Yes. Do you have plans for sharing that, or in what kind of infrastructure are you using, and how will you uh, make it available? Uh, uh, or? Yeah, I think Harris would be the best guy to to discuss to present that. But we are uh, uh, we had recently hired a new person to to build this database. So, um, um, and um, of course, we will be able to share those data with you if you are involved in our trials. And we will really partnership with you um, on uh, the analysis of our data. Um, Horace can talk about that, but we are um, uh, or uh, we are establishing a collaboration through Hatsevest with uh, Microsoft Azure to make uh, um, um, solutions for data analysis on Microsoft Azure. Mm. But how is I think you can comment on that. Okay. Mm. We can do it in the next mm. session. Yeah. 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 Mm. Next talk. Okay, there's uh, one more from, this is from um, Hauke. Um, how much does visualization of image data outside of the packs play a role in the future MS tracking? Uh, and that would include three-dimensional visualizations, workshop, multi-model imaging displays, and others. Uh, and he asks if you can speculate on what imaging is measuring its effects. Show imaging, uh, let me see. So how could imaging show effects that's not directly affected cognitive scores or supplement other? I'm not sure. Well, uh, so go I when you re reread the images, we usually yes. do it just, you know, 2D. Yes. Uh, yes. To what yes. extent do you see yes. that more intuitive viewing mm -hmm. uh, in three dimensions or maybe also automatic analysis will, mm -hmm. will be helpful in, in MS in the future? Yes, we are. I think the... One thing is the uh, research um, approach for defining new um, biomarkers for disease activity and disease progression in clinical trials. Um, and, and we really need that. So any new um, um, approach for the analysis would be important, also three-dimensional um, analysis. The challenge for us, uh, you can, I, I just mentioned uh, the, the use of atrophy as a measure for uh, this at least long-term disease activity. And, and we can do that in, in, in clinical trials um, uh, on, group, on the group level, but we don't have any good instrument for doing individual um, testing. Having the patient coming to our out clinic department, they ask, how is, how is, how is, um, mm. how is my treatment going? Is it effective or not? And we are not we don't have those tools to, to do those in on individual patients. So that that would be the ultimate goal for our activity at our center to translate this into clinical practice. So if you have uh, robust uh, measures that can be used for the individual patient, yet, yes, we are really aiming for that. Uh, um, just one question for me also. But uh, I got the impression that so you separate. Um, 
inflammation and degeneration in MS. And, 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 and I guess inflammation is easy for me as a mm. radiologist and, mm. and yourself mm. to read the images and you can say something mm. about the inflammation. But are there any biomarkers that tell you something in due time in terms of degeneration for MS? Or is that something you will just discover later when it's too late? Okay. Yes, of course, on a group level, we can see this uh, atrophy, even no. uh, in a short time uh, at the group level, f within one year. But, uh, okay. but uh, we don't have tools for that to, for the individual patient. But we, th we think the uh, neurodegenerative part is secondary to the inflammation. Mm -hmm. So the most important part is to stop the inflammation from the very beginning. Yes. Okay. Then I think our time is up. Mm -hmm. And thank you very much again. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for